um, like themed thing. <gasps> so like the one day we actually, for our craft in our home, we made vines um, out of like little hemp strings and cut out all the leaves and then hung them from the roof and then watched Tarzan and had like a picnic That's down so there good. and oh supported goodness. a local restaurant. So as much as you can kind of like bring all of the avenues together, it makes parenting way more fun. Yes, so. it's true. I'm all about the themes and all that fun stuff. Do you guys dress up like themes for Halloween and any special occasion? Yeah, so we did, um, we did Peter Pan this last year. So I was Captain Hook. My three-year-old was um, Tinkerbell. And my wife went as me because she was pregnant. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so we could dig up the archives. I'll maybe even try and find that photo and send it over. Please, so, please. Hot Rod, what is the movie you've seen most since quarantine started? Is it Frozen or Tangled? Frozen. I think I've seen Frozen about a thousand times. What about you, Ty? Oh, man. Actually, you know what? So we, we have two that are, like, downloaded on the on the iPad, and my daughter, Lucy, comes out to ride with me in the tractor cab, and it's Moana and Tangled. But Frozen was, like, you know, of the utmost importance. She had a Frozen birthday party for, it was kind of like a four- or five-month window, um, but she loves Tangled. Oh, so. totally. Cool. Same. Like, there's something about Ryder, right? Flynn Ryder. Okay, we need to stop this right He's now. He's so adorable, <laughs> Flynn Ryder. Craig <laughs> right, right, is trying to interject. Guys, no, no, guys, what I need, what I need more than that is for Ty to do the rock song from Moana. <gasps> what can I say? Yes, it's okay. Yes, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Oh, man, let me tell you. I was actually do, I was dancing and singing it in the living room the other day, so you're not even far off. That's how we wake our daughter uh, Peyton up. She's, she's nine months now. We put the rock song on, and we dance with her in the living room, and she loves it. That's amazing. Was this new song written during quarantine, or have you guys been sitting on this hard dirt for a while? Okay, so this kind of has a crazy story. Um, so, interestingly enough, when we went down to Nashville in February, um, we had this big old writing trip and had no idea what was coming around the corner. And we weren't even going to record hard dirt. And then on a whim, it worked out more like, hey, let's get this recorded. Um, we found, you know, a place where we can get it recorded. We can get this done and get it locked away. We knew it was going to be the next single and had no idea what was going to happen. So on a whim, recorded it, got back home after the tornado happened um, and then COVID happened and we realized this song is more relevant than ever. Like we just, we, we, didn't, we didn't plan that, but we knew that the next step in the career was about taking that step into more musical and lyrical depth. And we really wanted to say something with the next song. So what, you know, what, what we cause we're going to debut it on our mm -hmm. show. What, what, why is this message something we need right now? Um, I think essentially the song is a paradox about the human. Um, yeah. The human paradox of struggle and hope. Like you, you know, we all experience struggle um, but you look to the hope on the other side of something, and it seems to be this just this continuation. You know, we just talked a lot about parenting, um, and it's continually this thing of, of learning and growing, and you're never done learning. You're never done growing, um, and I think that this song right now, just in watching the world events unfold, um, there is so much struggle. There is so much heartache, um, but we really wanted to fixate on the fact that there is hope on the other side, and we can't lose sight of that. And so I think that this song really, it really captures the essence of that working through struggle and that essentially um, making you stronger. The only and problem line... right now is now I have to Google paradox. I didn't think we were going <laughs> to play stump the host this morning with big words. <laughs> I probably used it incorrectly. So I, yeah. I, I actually, that's what I've had to start doing. Like I have a buddy in my life. He's kind of like the, it's like taboo, the little buzzer that goes off. He's like, what does that actually mean? Yeah. We're going to Google that right now. Like, <laughs> I, I was totally using that in its wrong context. So, so true. Probably you'll look it up and you'll be like, that makes no sense. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, before all this happened, you guys, you, you, you recorded it and all this stuff. When you listen to it now, does it hit you yeah. a whole different way than when you first kind of did it? Completely. Every day that I listen to it, Greg, it's a different experience. And that's what I that's what I love about it. It was it's such a universal message. And in the title, you know, some people have been like hard dirt. It's like, well, that makes a lot of sense for the Hunter Brothers, you know, and it is genuine to us. It's authentic to us in terms of um, there being a lot of metaphorical imagery from nature to human growth. Um, that obviously is just a natural parallel being that we grew up on the farm and are still farming. 
Um, but what I love about it is it does not matter where you've come from, what you've walked through, who you are. Um, this song has relevance to you. And we're hoping that whoever it is that's listening to it can just listen to the words and place themselves in the story and say there is hope on the other side of whatever it is that I'm facing today. That is quite a paradox. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did I use that? Is that? <laughs> I think you used that correctly. He's bringing <laughs> out the dictionary. He's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Nailed it, Greg, with two Gs. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Hey, buddy, speaking <laughs> of hard dirt, we want to bring you into the show a little bit. This week with uh, we've started having a little bit of reopening, and one of the things that has been opened is playgrounds. We've been talking about playground injuries. You ever injured yourself on the playground? Oh, all the time. All the time. You know that I broke my femur, don't you? Like on a little zip line thingy. Do like, you think if I knew anyway. that, I would lead you into something like this? Oh, that's something that Greg would never do, would he? <laughs> no. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Um, do we have to relive this on the Yes, end? we okay. do, right? right? Well, you know, let's do it. Let's do it. We're talking about hard dirt. We're talking about um, all these life experiences. So it was a family reunion and what I would call an excuse for a zip line. That's why it's kind of like the correlation to a playground. Um, th- I would not recommend this. So anybody listening, do not try this at home. Um, it did not have a harness and you're supposed to drop into the water from this little platform. I had done it so many times as a kid. You're supposed to have somebody holding the rope and nobody was holding the rope. I swung off and I was trying to impress all my little cousins who were in the water. They're like, go tie. And I flung off the platform, and the rope got caught in the platform. I hit the ground. Femur snapped in half. <gasps> We're in the middle of nowhere. We didn't have um, proper reception. So they had to go and somehow get the ambulance to come. It was 45 minutes before they got on site <gasps> and then had to put my leg into the stretcher, um, take me to the hospital in Shawnee. It was probably an hour and a half, a couple hours before I even got medication because they couldn't give it to <gasps> me on site. And so now I have a 16 and a half inch titanium rod in oh! my right femur. I am self proclaimed Iron Man. And um, yeah, that's basically the story. I had to stop playing hockey for a year. I couldn't play um, piano because I couldn't actually even sit like just on a bench or on a chair for a period of time. Holy moly. Um, and it actually gave me a, a season of life to see how much the people around me cared about me. That was important. That was a good life lesson. And the other thing is I was able to tap into some creative outlets that um, I wasn't able to do to the capacity that I was able to do in that season. So, And so it, now, it has, it has thanks to your old buddy Greg, you get to relive your PTSD. <laughs> You're welcome for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the free therapy. <laughs> Are metal forks coming to your leg right now? Are they flying across the room? To... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know, like the first question everybody asked me was like, do you go off at airports? Yeah. I'm like, no. And it was so disappointing because I was kind of hoping that there would be this like grand moment when I walked through and there would be like, you know, things would go off and people would be like, what's happening? That like, man is half metal. That's... 15 and a half inch rod in my leg. Like, but no, nothing. Well, speaking of traveling, one more question before we let you go, mm-hmm. buddy. Um, we want to know about the longest one day road trip you've done. And I'm sure you and the, you and the boys yes. have done long ones. What was the longest one you remember one day? Oh, Nashville. 30 hours. Oh, oh. Nashville? Yeah. You've yeah, driven to Nashville. Uh, what's that? You've driven to Nashville? Yeah, we've driven to Nashville. In fact, we used to make that trip um, regularly. And fun fact, on our way down, we traveled with all of the families and the kids. Oh. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that for just a moment. Just think of the soap opera that existed there. And so like, we don't stop. We just switch drivers until we get there? Yep, exactly. Oh, jeez. That's how it works with us. We always, like, we take our shifts. Everybody takes, like, two and a half hours, and then you flop out. You know, next guy stocks up the next guy with bag of spits and, you know, a can of Coke or whatever. And, yeah, it's like clockwork. That's how we do things. Is that your road trip snack, though, is, like, a bag of spits? Like, what are you going to oh, take with you? Cracked pepper spits. Okay, you, there you go. MSG, and they are, like, they're so addicting. It's when crazy. you get to Nashville, your tongue sticks to the roof of your mouth like Velcro. You've had so many. Oh, totally. It's the same thing in the tractor cab, though. Like, yeah, you, it's, it's, it's like, it's not good how many spits I eat. <laughs> and the other thing is like, um, strawberry. I kind of just started reliving my childhood again and started buying strawberry bubblicious. Oh, yeah. Like, oh. like the big hunks of strawberry yeah. bubblicious. So good. Back, and it is so good. You want to go and one better than that? You find yourself a candy store that has still big league chew. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, we totally do that too. Totally. 100%. <laughs> So good. Watermelon flavor, cotton candy, all over that. White on right. Ty, do you remember Tahiti Treat? Please tell me you do. 
Tahiti treat? The drink Tahiti treat? No. You oh. got to remember, small town Saskatchewan, they barely had Coke. <laughs> That's right. Actually, my wife just reminded me she's an only child. And she's like, I kind of felt bad when I came to your family. And you guys, like, I, I heard about the stories where you all, like, basically shared one beverage. Like, your dad would get you one to share, like, all around. Like, you were the, the family that got all waters because drinks were just as expensive as, like, the meals themselves. You know what I mean? So that's, like, it's a lot when you add that all up. So that's when the don't leave your friends on the lip of the can rule yeah. really comes into play. <laughs> hey, take your friends. <laughs> take your friends. Yeah, yeah, not the most sanitary thing, but yeah, you know, brothers. Hey, buddy, we really appreciate your time. We're so excited to debut the brand new song tomorrow morning on the show where we fill in on the morning show here, but uh, I can't wait to play that. And thanks so much uh, again for the chat, as always. Hey, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you guys. And Honestly, like we were just talking about this the other day, your guys' support has just been absolutely incredible, and we love and appreciate you so much. You just feel like home to us, and so thank you for, for all that you continue to do for um, the country scene and for the world around you, especially in these crazy times. You give our love to all the family, okay? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. we Will do. Hugs all around.